July 28, 2013. I am your moderator, host, Tony Shadwick, um, on the Reddits and Twitters as Numsky. This morning there are four of us. We have uh, Mitchell from Reddit. Shut up. Goes as uh, crabs and gains these days. We have Christian, which... Hello. Cr- um, Christian, what username are you going by? Tubidi-doo. Tubidi-doo. I always uh, mispronounce it, so I figured I'd let you say it. And then we have Nathan, who is Tago Mago on Reddit. Yep. Good morning, guys. Morning. I had no idea you were Tago. I thought you were Steak Knife. Yeah. No, that's the other guy with the same last name as me. Oh. Oh. Good or with a K, right? Yeah. Well, I'm racist, so. Oh, crap. Oh. Right. We're off to a great start. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Wow. So do we want to bring up Jim Fails? Yeah, that'd be a good way to start. Um, I had my best one, I think, was I uh, had benched 280 by one um, like a few weeks ago, right? Yeah. This was like a year ago, but a few weeks before this event happened, I benched 280 by one pretty easily. I came into the gym the day the fail happened, and I got 275 by three like fucking easy as hell. So I figured, oh, I'm so good for 315. Um, So I put it up on the bar, and I spent about 15 seconds with my spotter trying to just unrack it and didn't get anywhere. (laughs) So I just had to fail the bench before even unracking it. Uh, So that was a good one. I've also had numerous times where I've... um, It always seems to happen with 470 pounds, and I'm getting really psyched up for a deadlift for 470 and I just fucking don't even get it off the ground. And by psyched up, I mean I'm like walking around like Godzilla, just like growling at everyone. But uh, yeah, never comes off the ground. Only happens with 470 too. I've gotten 500, but 470 doesn't budge. Hmm. I'd be that guy in the corner laughing at you there. Yeah, this would be your. <laughs> you'd be right to do that. Just like there's no way in hell I could lift that weight, but I can laugh at this. <laughs> Man, I I might be able to cap back it to get it to break the floor, maybe, but uh, I cap back deadlifts so yeah. much. And I I've, I've been trying really hard to uh to get better about it. And learning to deadlift at at a twenty four hour fitness, they've got this uh I think they really want somebody to kill themselves trying to deadlift there, honestly. They have what I thought was a deadlift platform back when I didn't know what an actual deadlift platform looked like. It, It is an actual raised platform metal that comes up off the floor, and there's a waist height bar holder. And then what I suppose to be safety pins, about uh, two feet lower than that, to where I guess they think you're going to fall forward into these pins in case you can't hold on but this platform is only wide enough for the grips so whenever you lower the bar it's like a deficit deadlift sort of situation where if you drop the bar it's going to land on your feet that it's actually higher than the plates are does this make any sense to you something like a glorified curl station what the hell is this thing for i i I can only imagine it's for deficit deadlifts. Well, you gotta take but a picture of that. They want no, you to do why, all. You, they want you to do all like of three your people in the here. history of the universe have done a deficit deadlift in a twenty-four hour fitness. Well, I'm one of them because I thought that was what you were supposed to do. I was like, "Oh, cool! You get more range of motion out of this." And until I realized that, what happens if my I grip fails? Their MO. <laughs> so I. You know, I started deadlifting off the floor and, you know, start getting dirty looks every time I would, uh, you know, finish a rep. It starts getting heavy enough that, you know, you're going to smack the floor pretty good no matter what you do. And They're quit dropping really... the weights. Like, I'm not God, dropping the weights. Because, like, 
you can be warming up with like 315 or whatever, and you can be putting it down like a gentle little angel, right? And they'll be like, oh, mm-hmm. fuck off, you're dropping the weights. And then some little like shithead will be like, just like fucking smashing 135 onto the ground after a clean and jerk, and I'll be like, fine with it, because it doesn't make as much noise. It's like, get oh, yeah. fucked. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, oh yeah, the board's gonna break, you're gonna make too much noise. Like, Motherfucker, I'm using bumper plates on a lifting platform. I know. It's not gonna happen. <sighs> it's too heavy, it you know, putting it down too loud. And even if it's not bumper plates, it's like fucking... It's like a car tire's worth of solid iron. Like, what could possibly happen to it? Yeah, exactly. Oh, well. Uh, I don't look as tough when I don't drop them fast, so it's clearly out of the option. Uh, I've learned my straight bar is apparently a limp noodle because the thing yeah. starts to flex with 225 on it. <laughs> and last night, I'm... Uh, <laughs> I'm doing heavy singles, which for me is 340. One rep max right now is about 355. And my wife comes out. Mm-hmm. Um, we were going to switch off while she works out. And <laughs> I put 340 down, and she's like, that bar's really bending. It's like, yeah, thing's a piece of crap. Does so your uh, my understand- does your wife do a barbell training too? She's just starting. Um the uh, last yeah. night she was doing uh, overhead press 35 pounds and couldn't mm-hmm. quite knock out the fifth rep. To give you an idea. Yeah. But uh, yeah, she's she's getting there. The uh, most, most people I've heard have gotten their wife or their girlfriend like into lifting like them. They find out in like a few months that their uh, wife or girlfriend is actually quite a bit better at it than they are. Well, um, crap. as I found out. <laughs> <laughs> well, at the moment, she's still working out mobility stuff. She's yeah. uh, doing pos- potato sack squats, just trying to get depth. She's almost there. I mean, she's conveniently wearing these uh, uh, workout pants that have a stripe down the sides of her legs. Mm-hmm. So I can sit there and just watch the side of her legs, and there's a nice white line that shows whether or not she's getting down to parallel. And she's got yeah. a few more degrees to go, but I, I suspect within a couple of weeks she'll be there. Uh, I'm guessing Mitchell, deadlift, uh, I don't think she's... Hmm? Oh, no, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say deadlift, I think she's doing okay on. She's about where I am on the power claim because I... I totally suck at power clean. Yeah, power cleans are gay. Let's just be honest. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm... I just I can't get elbows up fast enough. I, just I can't. only like six months ago realized that there is like a difference between a power clean and a uh, reverse grip curl. I was like, oh my god, you gotta like go. Ooh. Blew my mind. Oh. Hip drive. Hip drive. <laughs> but um, we got kind of derailed. Back to a uh, gym fails. Did you guys? Share yes. Yours? Yes. So we have the I can't unrack 315 and Numsky <laughs> figuring out how to use the deficit deadlift platform. Yeah, well, that was only half the fail there. The other yeah. one was more recent uh, before I stopped going to the gym. The two aren't related, but it will sound that way. Um, when I finally actually uh, you know, started doing deadlifts properly and training it properly, the weights started going up pretty quick on me uh, mm-hmm. and got to a point one day that I was so stimmed up I was having a really bad narcolepsy day had you know just been pegging myself with caffeine going to the gym went to hit a one rep max lock it out and then my bladder just gives yeah mm. wait this is your home gym or a 24 hour fitness 24 oh boy please yeah. tell me this like <laughs> on a Monday and I I had been sweating enough that nobody else could really tell, but it it just didn't matter. In that moment, I just felt so emasculated. I'm just yeah. like, really? <laughs> Nothing like peeing yourself in public. <sighs> and at that point, it wasn't even that heavy. I hadn't even hit three plate at that point. Pardon? I didn't I've had some pretty bad splashback while I was like pissing in the urinal in the gym. Some splashback, uh, you know. Yeah. You're a little too overzealous. <laughs> uh, basically, well, you're pissed, thing. though. <laughs> you, for all intents and purposes, pissed your pants. 
Yeah. Yeah, what about you, Christian? Let's see. I've, uh... I don't really do too many fails myself. I've had, you know, a couple rolls of shame like anybody else. Uh, I think one of the worst things that I had was, uh... If I'm on a stationary bike, I get, like, a sweat mark near my crotch, so it looks like I peed myself, but I didn't. Mm. Just you see, like, a little, like, hello, my name is Tag. It says, like, I swear I did not pee myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's just my crotch sweat. Now, if you're Ladies doing that, don't me. you get, like, awful, like, saddle sores on the inside of your legs? Oh, no. No, I've got the best gooch genetically for that. Yeah. <laughs> No, don't give your don't show, show yourself. You worked for that gooch. That's not genetics. That's blood, tears, and sweat. God, if it gets hot enough outside, just going for a long walk, I will get horrible saddle sores on the insides of my legs. It sucks. Speaking of biking, do any of you guys when you ride a bike, do any of you guys do that thing where you uh, stand on your pedals and you just lift your ass out of off of the seat? You know, All the time, about... but, you know, I don't right ride down. a bike that much. I don't think I've rode a bike in, like, seven years. <laughs> so mm. I've got to hit up breakfast. Um, yeah, go ahead, I'll step away. Go ahead. That actually reminds notes. me, we, we skipped around on the order of things, but, uh, yep. Nathan, if you want to go ahead and hit up your fails, I was going to actually double back and... Uh, give you guys a chance to tell a little bit about yourselves because we jumped right into uh, talking about how much we suck but we didn't actually talk much about <laughs> what we do a round of introduction, I guess. when we're not sucking um, well we probably suck when we don't suck yeah, yeah. okay so something kind of close to what Christian said I was um, thinking I was a hard ass riding a bike and uh, you know doing that BMX style where I uh, lift my ass off the seat and just stand on the pedals and um, I slip off the pedal, so my ass, act, my gooch basically gets crushed by the seat pedal, pretty much. Mm. Yeah, that was uh, that was pretty painful. Ugh. So I fall straight on. Yeah, you can imagine. Uh, see, there's another gym fail that's quite recent. I tried uh, doing low bar squatting, and I uh, I usually do super narrow stance, but I did uh, a really really wide one, and. Uh, Pretty much did a UTO by uh, ripping both my shorts open. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Actually, I've had the short ripping effect, too. I, I've, both shorts, uh, though. Yeah, not both of them. Yeah, I'm fine if I rip my underwear, but uh, got that butt crack showing. You got no, a crack, yo. <clears throat> I had another pretty good fail. I just remember it. I passed out while doing an OHP one time. Oh! Did you film it? I think I had the uh, I had the safety pin set up to like about my nipples, I guess, and I did an OHP and like I got it up. But after I did that, I just fucking went down completely. Oh! I'm gonna assume the bar didn't come down on your head. No, I had, the, I, I had the uh, I put the squat safety pins in when I do like really heavy OHPs for that reason because they always get light. Yeah, I'm I'm starting to think maybe I should do that too. That's uh, because I'm just remembering because the, our audience doesn't realize this. I've fallen asleep squatting. <laughs> you know that's that's a dubious distinction that not many people can go for. You just like sort of. Well, where does your body go when you fall asleep and you squat? Well, in this case, um, I proved Fracture's uh, theory of, you know, your nervous system controlling how tense your muscles are because I just totally got stapled under this cambered bar. Mm -hmm. um, and I just went through the full range of motion, A to G, you know, straight down and woke up that way. That's a <laughs> What's the cambered bar for, though? Is it like uh, you've got wrist, shoulder? Well, the cambered bar, I don't know what its intended purpose is necessarily, but I have tendinosis in both of my elbows bilaterally, and I'm starting to figure it out that 
my shoulder mobility sucks so bad that when I get into this position, I'm just putting a ton of torque on my elbows and I was tearing them up. So on while I'm looking that mobility, huh? You're saying low bar squats put stress on your elbows? Yes. Well, part of it was, um, you try you know, just like really, Mark really, Ripto, I used to whenever the same you, thing. Whenever you talk, uh, not talk to Mark Ripto, never have. Whenever you look at Mark Ripto's materials, he gives you this cue. He tells you elbows up. And the idea is that if you keep your elbows out from underneath yeah. the bar, you don't get tendonitis from bearing that load. Well, I took elbows up to mean instead of nice and tight in the shoulders and slightly cocked back and out of the way, I took it as this. Elbows so that's probably straight why up. I had and tendons. of course our audience can't see this, but I had my elbows up shoulder level, maybe even slightly <laughs> above. Yeah, I get them up and pushing the bar down. <laughs> yeah, well that's that's basically what I was doing and in turn <laughs> The tendons in my elbows were bearing part of the load because now they're up above the shoulders. Um, yeah, I, I've I've done a bang up job of misinterpreting uh, fitness stuff online. I have never been yeah. formally coached by someone who has half a clue. I had weightlifting coaching when I was in football in high school, and that man was clueless. And I, I'm convinced football coaches are guilty of a great many uh, bro science things that get hung, oh, yeah. uh, handed down to the gym from one generation to the next. Like all those uh, 500 uh, oh, without a doubt. full squats high school players. Like, oh. Yeah, in high school I squatted 500 pounds, <clears throat> 600 pounds, and then it's yeah. like a two-inch range of motion. Oh, yeah, if someone says, like, someone says, like, back in football, I was like, all right. I I automatically know you didn't actually do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you guys that, remember that video that was on our fitness a while ago of like this guy who was like coaching all these like seventeen year old kids <laughs> and I'm like doing like gear squats and shit. No, I have oh, I'll try to dig that up. Hilarious. Seven year olds in gear. Training. Well that oh my well, God. crap, they're they're a personal trainer. He actually pop up he came a... back. And he was like trying to defend himself to our fitness. I didn't see this guy, Dude. but I'm I'm gonna go out on a limb. What was he? He was yeah. having him do gear. Personal trainers squats. aren't much better. Pardon? What's much better? Well, I don't know if it was. I don't. It looked like it was using like squat suits. Um, and yeah, he basically had him squat like they were in gear. Like he had. Had their legs like super fucking wide apart. Oh. And yeah, I used to like cambered bars and bands and all this fucking gay shit. <sighs> I'm trying to find it. That reminds me, uh, Mitchell. Apparently, I'm going to put the explicit tag on this recording because there's no way I'm going back and beeping you. <laughs> there's absolutely no way. Oh, I was meaning. Yeah. <laughs> I was meaning to ask whether or not uh, we should be self-censoring here, and uh, no, I'm just gonna slap oh, the no. explicit tag on it. Screw it. It's too much work. Oh, so while we're waiting for uh, pussy, yeah, yeah, yeah. After all the trouble I did getting the sound system, I'm yeah. not gonna turn this into a tech podcast. It it was a pain to get the sound set up working. Uh, why don't we go around, uh, I'll do last, because I just feel like I'm talking too freaking much. Um, Mitchell, why don't we start with you. Give us a little background on yourself, what sort of training you do, uh, you know, sports mm -hmm. participated in, ass is kicked, whatever. Um, well, I'm 24 years young. I've never been good at any sport ever. Um... <laughs> Clearly. I'm only good at weightlifting. <laughs> I'm only good-ish at weightlifting because um, it's the only thing I can do with my incredible lack of coordination. Uh, so yeah, I've been lifting for like two and a half. Well, I've been I, I fucked around before this, but like for the last two and a half years, I've been lifting like nonstop completely. Um, yeah, 
Some of it was training for – most of it was training for powerlifting, which I'm absolutely terrible at. I only got up to a 375 uh, for two squat, 500 deadlift, and 300 bench, and 190 OHP. Uh, now I'm pretty much focused on just bodybuilding or whatever. Not going to compete because that's gay as fucking hell. Um, just want to get bigger and more jacked at her. Um, and, yeah, right now my training is basically an amalgamation of Fat 531, Small Vlog Jr., and the Hepburn Method, which I just sort of threw the fuck out the wall based off what's worked for me. And it's going pretty well so far. So, yeah, these days I'm just eating, 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 and lifting. And trying to get my deadlift back up to where it used to be. Because, like I said, I got 500 back when I um, back before I did this gigantic cut a couple of months ago where I cut from like 220 down to 195. Um, and my deadlift consequently went from like 405 for 10 down to like 345 for 5. So trying to get that back up there because obviously that's dog shit. So that's where I'm at now. Hmm. It looks like Tagamago still you guys? away. So, uh, Christian. Yeah. Dubba dee doo. What do you do? What a bastard. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, mostly bicycling, obviously. Uh, hence the awesome shirt that I'm wearing today. And, uh,. Ah. Yeah, we've got somebody yeah. who does cardio representing, at least. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I did weightlifting uh, in my freshman and sophomore years, and as a result, I have a really killer sprint, but still working on riding to the sprints, because I'll get a mid-pack finish, but I'll pass five people in the last 100 meters. Mm. So what got you into weight training, then? Uh, mostly, mostly FCJ, actually. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, Yeah, Lord. just like, you should lift weights, like, okay, I'll try it out, and it was fun, definitely, and since I didn't want to ride in the middle of the winter, it was something to do, but this Has past winter... Has it translated into any improvement, like Hidden Hills or anything? Say what? Has that translated into your riding improving? Has it made it easier to hit hills or anything like that? Sort of. Um, I'm kind of, compared to the rest of my team, I'm kind of fat. So, oh. which I, I weigh, you know, 168 or so. Which well, is I want to see the lightest member of your team. <laughs> uh, the lightest member of my team this year uh, is a kid named Jordan who actually has a better power to weight ratio than a lot of pros because he only weighs 107. Holy crap. crap. And he's 5 foot 9. He's 5 9? Yeah, he's a skeleton. Oh my god. This this is like my brother-in-law. He's uh what? He's 109. Well, no, my brother-in-law is not 109. That's His like teammate anorexic. is my brother-in-law is over six feet. I don't know exactly how tall he is, but he's lighter than me. Um, he Well, I mean, when I'm at my best weight these days, I'm somewhere between 160 and 165. Yet he's over six feet and he's less than me. That's just insane. And he's he's got like that same does. thing going on. It makes me wonder how the man walks, but he can <laughs> he can run. No problem. So have any of you guys uh Oh never mind, we haven't uh never mind. Continue with the topic. <laughs> okay. Before I derail well, we can it. circle back to it, doesn't matter. Alright. Yeah, so, so basically if we're doing yeah. uh, hills, I will get my ass kicked by most of them. But if it's a really uh, windy so yeah, day uh, if it's a windy day then I can just Shield them from the wind with my fatness. <laughs> Let them draft Great. off of you. Great. Yep. You know what's up? Uh... Hmm? What's up? Oh, uh, whenever you, know what's you really are good left... for improving your uh, hills. Yeah. You know what's really good for improving your uh, time going up hills? Use a car. Yeah. 
don't ride in the hill? I don't know. I'm starting Wait to think that uh, what this thing's being like all delayed or whatever. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm starting to think that Mitchell's lagging on us pretty hard here. Okay, there yeah. we go. Are we back? Yeah. Yep. Well, maybe. Okay, as I was saying, you know what's really good for improving your time on hills? Go ahead. Is HGH. <laughs> HGH. HGH, uh. EPO, testosterone, all that good stuff. <laughs> There's some Eat serious and lag hard. there. Yeah, it is. Mitchell, I'm going to say one. Now, as soon as you hear me say that, say it back to me. One. Five second delay. Oh, wait, okay. you didn't say it yet. <laughs> no, I did. <laughs> no, I think I, I think I fucked that up or being retarded. Try it again. Okay. All right, one. One. Six second delay. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll tell you what. Everybody abandon ship on the uh, yeah. hangout and then come back in. That should fix the lag, and I will continue to amuse everyone by just babbling until we get back into the hangout. All right? All right, so I guess I'm supposed to entertain everyone while we wait for everybody else to get back into the podcast. Brilliant. So um, we will talk about my training a little bit while we wait for everybody else to get back in. And we've got Mitchell. Hey, well, I'll just wait for everybody else to rejoin. Why not? Everybody else kidding me? Yep. Yep. All right. And I just need to double check sound, make sure we're still going to disk, because that's a little bit important. And it looks like we're still good. All right. <laughs> um, so while everyone was away, I was starting to talk about my training a little bit and my background. Um, I'm a little bit older than the rest of you. I'm 35, will be 36 in September. Uh, when I was a young boy in high school, back in the early 90s, I was a football player. And, yeah, I know. I was I was defensive. A linebacker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They tried me at that position. Uh, they tried me at defensive end, tight end. The last game of my freshman year, I must have had the worst football coach ever. He put me in his nose tackle. I weighed 140 pounds. How, how big were you back then? I was the same height I am now. I was five foot ten, weighed 140 mm -hmm. pounds, soaking wet, mm -hmm. and they lined me up. Oh, a good nose guard. Yeah, I. <laughs> Do they yeah, not I know what blue. football is? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they just they, hated let you. me put this way. The center is typically one of the heaviest players on the field. Um, the only the heaviest player on the field should be the defensive tackles. And if you're in an alignment with an odd number of defensive linemen, you will have a position called a nose guard or nose tackle which is just a defensive tackle that's lined up right over the center. Um, it's almost always your fattest player. And they lined up a 5'10", 140-pound white kid wearing glasses under his football helmet oh. over the center. I got blown out of the hole so bad. <laughs> I mean, lining me up at defensive end made sense because... As tiny as I was, I was a lot faster than the the offensive tackle that was supposed to be blocking me. So I could get yeah, around. Yeah, you can just and, run around and get a sack that way. Yeah, but lining me up at nose tackle made no sense at all, um, unless you just want the other team to run all over you, which they proceeded to do, picking up three to five yards a clip as the linebackers had to come in and bail me out over and over again. Um, but it quickly became apparent whenever we were doing hill runs in full gear that I could run circles around the rest of the team. My endurance capabilities were much better, and the cross-country coach saw this one day and talked me into 
joining the cross country team and leaving the football team. So the next year I was cross country instead of football. And that was great, except for the excruciating shin splits. Um, but I still did weight training under the tutelage of the football coach, which was awful. And I gave up all training entirely once I went off to college. About five years ago in 2007, 2008, I finally got back to weight training. Uh, Johnstone Fitness, I don't know if you guys have heard it. Um, you know, it was a programmer. He was really obese. He cut himself down to like 10% body fat by eating maybe 800 calories a day. The worst possible way to do it. And then... Uh, your time. Yeah, I, he was eating like some beans and water every day. And that was about it. But he did this max OT. Just drink the water in the bean can and call it a day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he did this uh, max OT lifting system that Skip LaCour had come up with. And it was this brain dead programming where you switched lifting routines like every six weeks. And there was no focus on the core lifts at all. There was no obvious progression beyond make sure you lift at least four reps and if you're able to do six increase the weight and there was no idea of periodization so there was no progression so from 2008 up through our yeah 2008 up through the beginning of 2010 i was lifting five days a week but i wasn't making any sort of progress at all um and then I got into our fitness, and I still stuck stupidly with Max OT, assuming that I just wasn't working hard enough. Didn't get my diet in order, and then some injuries and stuff came up, and I finally got my periodization straightened out and, you know, actually went back and did starting strength. And then Texas Method, and these days I'm doing squat every day, uh, which isn't so much a program as... A literalization I'm squatting basically every day and training every single day oh, but I've only gotten my lifting truly in order in the last year year and a half so that's me oh and I was a goaltender at one point <coughs> Quidditch in line yes hmm Quidditch Quidditch <laughs> Sure. To the broomstick. Oh. So yeah, that's... You, there's people who like go and have like actual Quidditch matches like on college campuses, you know? Yes, they do. And I don't understand. If it I ever even a see that, bit. I'm going postal. It's better with drinking. I just if don't I understand the logistics of it. Are you just before. like running around with a broom between your legs playing with yeah, bus? Just... It looks really dumb. Yeah, honestly, it probably wouldn't be that dumb if they took the fucking broom out of the equation. <laughs> yeah. Well, without the broom, it's basically lacrosse, right? Without the broom, well, you can't return sort your of. water. Can't fly without the broom, though. <laughs> Gotta have my so, Nimbus. So the goal, instead of having an actual goaltender, you've got a small loop <clears throat> up on a pole, and that's your goal, right? Yeah. Yeah. You still have a goaltender, but they also have a broom. Between their legs, too. Oh, great! <laughs> and then you got this uh, this guy who dresses up in um, yellow, a giant yellow jumpsuit, and he's a snitch, and you have to catch him. What? Catch the snatch. The snatch. <laughs> Gotta poke the snatch with your broom. Oh, God! I'll tell you what, you guys talk amongst yourselves for a moment. I have to excuse myself. Sorry. Take a dump. Go sleep. Have we gotten to your training yet? Uh, no. Okay, I'll just, I guess I'll introduce myself. I'm 21 years young. Um, Lucky bastard. I don't know. <laughs> Yay, 21 uh, year olds. Woo. Um, let's see. I'm fitness the old history. one here now. <laughs> <laughs> um, fitness history. Uh, in high school, I did um, fencing, badminton, mm -hmm. and soccer. So. Quite the pretentious douche. <laughs> I wasn't any good at any of them except for badminton. Uh, 
that was fun until I started. Um, I think I went into 4chan actually. That's how I got introduced mm-hmm. to everything. And then um, that was back in the year of Scooby and Z's. And um, yeah, I just started from there. And then I thought it was kind of gay after Z started doing his ass shots and stuff. And uh, moved over to our fitness. And then found you guys in FCJ. And I was like, oh, you guys are pretty cool. And um, no, that's yeah. <laughs> yeah, relatively cooler. Um, so yeah, I just started the whole starting strength method. Doing, doing small of and small of junior, trying to get my lifts up. And uh, I'm thinking of competing. In a what? <clears throat> what? Competing in powerlifting? Uh, no, Quidditch. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I've competed <laughs> once, actually. It's nothing special. It was a stupid deadlift only, and somehow got third place because I was three people in my weight class, so got a yeah. medal to boot. I'd go for a deadlift only competition because then I'd win on leverages. Got these orangutan arms. I'd do it. I'd win too because I think I'm the only one in my town who deadlifts. <laughs> well, that's true. Actually, there's this kid at my gym who's like 160. He is like fucking. He's like a genetic fucking freak. He has legs like the size of my torso. He like fucking reps out 500 on deadlift. Oh it's retarded. God. And uh, he has a tiny body, but he can like fucking bench 300 easy. It's just, it's absolutely insane. He like squats 465 for reps. I hate the fuck out of him. So he's got like tiny legs but orangutan arms then. No, he's got like huge legs and tiny arms, but somehow with those tiny arms he can fucking like, he can overhead press 215. Does he pull conventional or sumo? Sumo. Yeah. I say I hate him. He's actually a really nice, cool guy, but I'm just jealous. So if somehow he sees this, he knows what I'm talking about. I don't hate you. I'm just jelly. I'm sure he'll see this. All right. So now that we've all introduced ourselves, I wanted to ask, um, have any of you guys ever had trouble with eating enough calories? Oh, heck Or have you only had trouble the other way around? Well, yeah. Eating enough calories is a problem for me. Really? Like, what? At what number do you like start to have issues at? Probably going, probably above like two hundred surplus. Yeah. Whoa. I guess I gotta find more shitty foods to just <laughs> go over. Well, yeah. I guess, I guess being fair, I mean, in my case, yes, I've had trouble eating enough calories but it's my own doing because I would fast like 18 20 hours a day and then leave myself four hours and have a target calorie count of like 3,000 so (laughs) bring it on (laughs) yeah my wife is sitting here watching me you know eat my dinner get up come back with some other thing eat that, walk back to the kitchen, come back with some other thing, eat that, walk back. <laughs> and over the course of what is supposed to be our dinner time, I eat like four meals. And it comes down to me like putting away some stupid amount of sugar at the end of the evening to make sure I hit my target <laughs> calories. Um, but, you know, if I'm not fasting, get left to my own devices, I'm going to eat somewhere between 500 and 1,000 calories over maintenance daily. That's how I got fat to begin with. <laughs> you just Getting enough protein like in there. lifestyle there. Just continuously yes. eating and then putting away some sugar and going to bed. Oh, my God. God. I think I only lift so I can eat a lot. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's some merit to that. They, what was the... Uh, should we start talking about uh, other people, Mr. 531 year? Gabe? Uh, yeah. There was, uh, what was it, the Toronto, the, uh, and uh, there was a meetup of some Redditors of a certain subreddit. A Allegedly. Years ago in Toronto. And uh, there was some comment about the fact that he seemed to constantly be shoveling food into his pie hole. <laughs> Never stops. And the... <laughs> Well, I mean, the man seems inhuman. He is the walking epitome yeah. of what 531 is supposed to do to you. But it's it's like he never breaks down and never gets tired. It doesn't make any sense. It's probably because he actually does the deload weeks and no one else in the world does. 
That's well, okay, he may now. <laughs> originally, he didn't. He talked big I game. I don't think Jim originally. Wendler even does. He talked big game about, oh, I'm never skipping my deload weeks initially. He was just doing 5-3-1, five, 5-3-1, three, one, five, three, one, mm -hmm. three-week cycles. And maybe he actually does the deloads now. I, I don't talk to the guy a whole heck of a lot. The only thing, and I probably should have disclosed this during the workout part, the, the way I got injured a year and a half ago was attempting to do the 5-3-1 uh, challenge the same time that uh, Gabe was doing it. What's the 5 3 one challenge? Just doing it for a year? Yeah. Yeah. I've and done that too. I got I'm about I got about four cycles in and tore up my rhomboid uh, to the point that the doctor said I wasn't allowed to do any lifting and I decided to continue squatting uh, using a Smith machine. Which was great. So I started looking for squat I remember those I days. Yeah, I wound up doing small off on a Smith machine. That was great. <laughs> um, one arm small off on a Smith machine for a while, which was awesome. Hey, were you the one who had the, who broke his back and had to use a Manta or something? Who, who yeah, the... yeah, that was that was me. Um, my rhomboid was so tore up that I could not do low bar, and I couldn't, uh, I couldn't support the bar the bar high with one arm so I was using a manta ray so I could use one arm and eventually I got it to the point to where I could like put my fingertips on the bar with the manta ray so yeah I was doing a small off program with a crushing one rep max of 225 at one point high bar and my my one rep max improved quite a bit doing small off but it was still pathetic <laughs> Did you go all the way to the intense phase or only uh, base? No, no. I Well, and that's the problem. I could only do the uh, base cycle over and over again because, you know, it wanted you doing negatives. And sure, I could do the negatives, but I was going to be really, really slow about doing the negatives. It was going to take well, forever to do the cycles. workouts. You, from what I've heard from other people who finished small off, they just, uh, they just skip out the switching cycle and they just do deadlifts for a week. Oh, really? Well, I couldn't do deadlifts. I couldn't do anything that would torque that left rhomboid. So that was totally screwed up. That's why I own a manta ray. Actually, I own two manta rays because the gym sort of stole my first one. And I had my name and phone number on it, and they never contacted me, so I, I bought a second one. And then three months later, I get this phone call. We found this blue thing with your name and phone number on it. We thought we should call you. <laughs> they have no yeah, idea yeah. what that is, by the way. No, Basically, no, they like don't. The most perverse sex toy they've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> now I've got a mental image of uh, Mitchell with a manta ray in his crotch. How does this thing fit here? <laughs> Trying to <put> it on. <laughs> Jam it hard. Snaps into place. <laughs> <laughs> oh lord, man, we got off topic there. We we're talking about Gabe, though. I mean, yeah. The man can How the eat. dude constantly eats. He's a good little specimen. Little? Not so creepy or anything. I, I mean, he's not exactly tall. The dude oh, needs to start yeah. hanging on the body acceptance. Dude. dude, if that guy cut, he'd be like fucking. Like he's he's well, he's in pretty good shape now, obviously. But if he like got down to like single digit body fat, he'd be fucking retardedly jacked. He'd be just fucking retarded. Yeah, but getting the man onto a cut, he's he's yeah. accustomed to eating approximately well, I mean, a meal every half hour. So. <laughs> yeah, it's, obviously, it's up to him what he does, and he's like doing good and like just training for strength. But I just think it'd be interesting to see him cut down, and, like see what like a you know, because he like oh, yeah. been bulking for like three years. It'd be interesting to see like you know what he's got. Well, how that Do we know so how close to his target is he is? I mean, his his latest Recently, goal was squatting 600 pounds. So yeah, well, and deadlift. He got the deadlift a while ago. I don't know about the squat. I'll check well, out if the he photography. Yeah, if he uh, if he's deadlifted 600, I mean, he's got to be within 100 pounds, right? So God, I'm, I'm going to so assume jealous. he's yeah. I'm going to assume he, he's, he's uh, he squatted 515 at least. So if he squatted 515, in theory, every four weeks he's adding 10 pounds to his uh, 
Well, now he's not doing five three one anymore. He's doing squat every day, just like I. No. Am. Um. So His game who knows when he's gonna hit that goal something. then? I mean, at this yeah. point, he's like three weeks into doing squat every day. From that's right. I just got done asking him this the other day. He's doing squat every day. He's about three weeks in, and he hasn't even hit the squat flu portion of it yet. And I just came across that myself a couple of days ago, where um, you've been squatting so much that you feel absolutely ill from it. And you're <laughs> supposed to just work through it, which blows. Um, Thus, glue. Here he is. Gabriel Malone. <laughs> <laughs> Gabriel Malone. Sure, we're not going to dox ourselves, but we'll dox him. He's not. He's not. His photography name is Gabriel Malone. I can't dox him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just reading his name. Okay, well, in that case. <laughs> uh, he says he his squat himself. is 525. Jesus, his OHP is 240. Get fucked. What? Damn. If I get OHP 225, I would just be so goddamn happy. I That's just so. just hit 135 on my overhead press. Ouch! I, I managed to do God, three. Dude, I even talk about OHP. I managed to do three heavy singles at 135, and I was pretty freaking proud of myself for that. Have you guys ever? Um, I found this thing called the uh, Hepburn method, which basically mm -hmm. I use it for OHP, and it works better than anything I've ever done before. You just do uh, eight sets of two, right, the first day, mm -hmm. and then the next workout, you replace one sets of two and a set of three, and then the next day, you replace two sets of two and two sets of three. So basically, you work from eight, eight sets of two to eight sets of three, and after that, mm -hmm. you add, like, five pounds and start off with eight sets of two. And using that, I got my OHP from, like, 170 up to 190 in, like, a month. Whereas it had been stuck like at 170 for like fucking six months. See, I what I've been doing is uh, some bastardized short-term five-three-one thing where I do five sets of a you know 60% weight, do three of like an 80%, mm -hmm. and then one of a 90% plus, and then I back it off to 50% and do five sets of 10 all in one day and then do that again the next day only add five pounds if I can and I've started doing instead of just five three one and doing one set of one I do as many sets heavy sets of one as I can and if I can't do five heavy sets I'll repeat that weight the next day until I can do five yeah. heavy singles and then up the weight and then I always keep the 50% plus of 10 reps, uh, five sets of 10. And I've actually been upping that in five pound amounts. So that's not even accurate at this point because my, my one rep max is 135, yet I'm doing five sets of 10 at 95 on my back off. So, yeah, heavy, heavy singles at 135 and then five sets of 10 at 95, which doesn't feel all that heavy whenever I'm doing it. I'm just getting a Have ton you guys of ever volume. tried um Have you ever tried the Klokov press? Oh, no. behind I actually don't know what that Jesus looks like. Oh, Christ. Christ. Yeah. It fills my shoulders. Dude. I have no fucking It is so fucking hard. Like and you can see like videos of like Paul Carter and Jamie Lewis doing it for like 225. It's just like I don't understand how it's possible. I'm sure they Oh good. yeah, that's the <laughs> Jamie Lewis 225 by 1 Klokov press. There's a video of Dimitri Klokov doing it like for 225, like for three sets. It's like <laughs> easy as hell. And like if you go to the gym and you put like 95 on the bar, you're going to have a shit time getting it up. And they're just like going like that. It's just ridiculous. Okay, so he gets in so a high hard. bar squat position with his arms stupidly wide. Yep. <laughs> just presses that bitch up. This is like a snatch grip. Oh, you've got to be freaking that. kidding me. Yeah. Oh, you're looking at the oh. Dimitri video. Holy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's the Jamie Lewis video that he's got. If you just Google Klokov press, that's the very first result. Is Jamie Lewis doing it 225 by one? That. Yeah. That's go horrible. and try it at 95 pounds today, and uh, 
you'll appreciate that. I don't, it's fucking so hard, but I I yeah. don't understand what what are you gaining from that? It's that I don't know. You, um, I was listening to a podcast with Jamie Lewis and Paul Carter, and they were both thought it would be awesome for reasons I couldn't really understand. But yeah, I did it for a. I did it for a while, and I think it helped my OHP out, but they're just so really? miserable I stopped doing them. Yeah. I don't think I would um, go for heavy singles on that. I probably... Well, no. I I like your idea, actually. Do that as my back off. Instead of doing uh, 5 by 10 50% or whatever the weight is, you know, 95 is over 135 is greater than 50% by some measure. But uh, do back off sets of clock off press for whatever weight I can do, five sets of ten of it, get the volume in that way, see if it changes. You know what? Given your shoulder issues, I would do pretty much anything besides a cloak-off press ever. Oh, really? <laughs> they're fucking, at least for me, they're rough on your shoulders. Holy shit, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so probably don't do that. <laughs> I don't know. Actually, Definitely my rhomboid's getting a lot better. The, the problem is... Um, yeah. After I injured it, there's a lot of scar tissue hanging around in that rhomboid and a massive trigger point back there. So I have to do some degree of trigger point therapy on that basically weekly. Um, Is that a lacrosse ball in a PVC pipe? Um, not a lacrosse ball. Actually, I've got a to-do item to go to a sporting goods store and buy a lacrosse ball that has been on that to-do list forever. Because I keep forgetting to go. Um, it's been dry needling for the most part. And I actually did something that may eventually be a fail video. I ordered a box of acupuncture needles from Thailand that <laughs> should show up middle of next month. And going to play around with dry needling myself, that should be fun. There you go. So far as a title, dry needle yourself. Yeah, the only time I've uh, poked a needle into myself, it was definitely a fail. Oh, really? My uh, issue with the polonidal cyst. Ugh. A cyst oh, in my God. Crack. That yeah, so a lot of fun. You were trying to lance a cyst on your back yourself? Yeah. Oh. That doesn't sound like <laughs> fun. Ew. It well, wasn't... Like Terrible. It was nasty. like a lot of blood and pus. Yeah, but well, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. No, I mean, I it's was... not like something you're going to the doctor to. Hey, doc, I got a cyst on my ass. Please pop it for me. And that's gotta be awkward, right? Yeah, no, nah, I, I don't. I don't want to have that kind of relationship with my doctor. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, eventually you're gonna have to have your prostate checked, son. And <laughs> <laughs> will you still respect me in the morning? Yeah. And don't squat uh, that day. No squatting that day. Great. Yeah. Oh no, just stiff leg deadlifts. <laughs> I love. Do you guys remember when um, Jamie Lewis? The whole thing with him doing the gay porn came out. Oh yeah, it's I wasn't actually around wisdom. the day that happened, but who the hell? Biggest nugget of you... wisdom was don't squat on the day after you get fucked in the butt. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> I was so that in his... mind, sir. Like who, who so, found that video? It's like I think it was Mr. Thomas. He, he just passively like, I... searched like Jamie Lewis gay porn. Oh, he does do gay porn. No, oh, apparently man. someone linked to it, like linked to it on Fit or whatever, and he saw it, and that's where oh. the trail ends. He's like. Just like linked to some like random gay porn image or whatever, as they want to do, and he's like, "Holy shit, that's Jamie Lewis." <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, how still like... get... I don't know how they get that stuff. Like I've I've seen a picture of uh, Croc and drag. Oh really? Can I see yeah. that? <laughs> Someone posted on a fit. That was ages ago, but I don't think I have it anymore. But mm. it was a uh... yeah. That Croc um drag a lot more shocking than the Jamie Lewis. Uh... Dick in the mouth thing to me. The well, here's the thing. I've got a sheltered background. This is I mean, such a fucking masculine guy. I, I just um, with Jamie Lewis, I popped in on that like the day after, and I just assumed it was a running joke that this hadn't actually happened. 
and somebody had eventually posted the link and I clicked on it and naively I'm like, holy crap, this actually did happen. Um, now what? And <laughs> he owns up to it. I mean, it isn't even like, yeah, that was in my sordid past or something. No, no, he owns it. Oh, yeah, it. he... Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just, just like, like, well, yeah, now what do you do? You know. <laughs> he took that aside. It's, like, it's um, like, oh, my wife loves it. I'm like... I found out yeah. about it because, like, they posted it, they posted about the gay porn thing, right? And then someone posted a video of, like, of him and, like, his gay porn friend, like, having some outdoor strongman competition. And I saw this, like, before the uh, gay porn thing. And it's like, mm-hmm. okay, so they're doing a push-up competition. All right, now they're doing push-ups laying on each other's back. Okay, and now they're sucking at each other's toes. It's <laughs> getting a little... It's <laughs> just like, yeah, right, who's the competition quickly. has to suck my toes? It's like, what? That took a dark turn. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's like the... Um, yeah, it's like the line that a certain subreddit tends to tiptoe towards but doesn't ever actually cross. He just crosses it <laughs> outright. <laughs> I don't think we've ever tiptoed that close. No, 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 no. <laughs> there, there have been, there have been some creepy PMs I've gotten. Really? Really? Yeah. Well, you, those of you <laughs> on Reddit that have been in subreddits around me, at one point in time, I had no. I still do. I have Flair in a subreddit that literally says Numsky is not a chick. Mm-hmm. That that came to be because apparently my writing style comes across as effeminate, and apparently the username Numsky mm-hmm. is effeminate. I have no idea how. I've had that username since I was 14. <laughs> I'm getting ready to turn 36. You do the math. People in real life have called me this. Um, but I was getting hit on routinely. Nice. I'm like, one, I'm married. Two, wrong gender. Entirely. Silver Hydra just like gender. messaging you. Yeah. Yes, it was Sylvie. Of course. Was it actually? Was it anyone like anyone we know messaging you? You don't got to say names, but was it? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. There were there were a couple of uh, regulars on Reddit mm-hmm. that uh, totally got caught off guard. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Oh, there was oh, that well, one time that uh, using this once posted dick pics. That was a fun day. Who? Oh, oh my! It went up for a while. He he posted some dick pics. Like, <laughs> I think then like Scotty said, like, take this down, son. <laughs> there there is no good end to posting that sort of image anywhere. Yeah. The fact that the image exists means that someday this is going to come back to haunt you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But Imagine speaking of UTO, then... you know, there's there's two things about UTO <laughs> that stand out to me. Three really. One. The all-time famous uh, diagram of TK how he uses the urinal. The toilet, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the Oxford fact that he... percent whey protein? The fact that he got <sighs> best dog. Oh. Auto, autoerotic is, exfis, uh, Oh my god, that was the most amazing thing ever, yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. Well, I got to peace out. I will see you guys next week. All right. All right. I gotta cool, go soon. It's been like an hour. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it has. And I'm going to have to edit this down some. We didn't even hit all the topics. That's cool. Yeah. We're getting week. this nailed down. Um, I feel some need because, you know, a week from now, this won't be relevant at all. The dude with the iPad in the gym, the 4 chain. Oh, yeah. After. God. First of all, Holy that crap. looked like a... Oh, that guy looked like a steaming stack of dog shit. He was a fucking fat dick with a tribal tattoo. He looked like yeah. shit. He did not look much better than the guy curling. Well, and so, it, like, well, and here's the thing. Simply being out of shape curling at a low weight isn't, you know, that's not a gym fail unto itself. I mean, if he was yeah. in there swinging his back, you know, just totally doing it wrong, maybe. But even then, that's that's pretty low-level I mean, we see stuff worse than that with cable machines. Oh, I mean, yeah. Heck, the, it, it's just not even close happened. to being a failure. He's just making no. fun of the guy because he's skinny. 
<laughs> so, He's trying to make himself feel better about himself. That's all it is. So he posts it to what our rage, Facebook. and it eventually makes yeah. its way back to our fitness. And there's enough four chaners that hang around on Reddit that it turns up. I assume in slash fit on 4chan. And as we know, you know, 4chan is not at all activistic. Anonymous never goes out and, you know, figures out every sort of detail of your life. And he somehow gets kicked out of his gym because someone from 4chan figures out who he is and sends the whole thing to the gym owner. Really? You guys know much more about yeah. it than that? That's about it. That's what happened. That's about um, it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Man. Who the fuck brings an iPad to the gym? Yeah, that's that's the bigger concern, right? Because I've, I've started it's working like, on... Uh, so I'm just going to set up my desktop in a squat rack and get some spreadsheets yeah. done. Play some uh, Angry Birds while I'm doing leg curls. <laughs> well, I mean, I've started writing a mobile app to track workouts and sync it with uh, the squatrack.com. And one of the issues that I came up with is detecting the screen resolution and drawing the thing right. And I was like, do I really want this thing to support tablets? Because now I'm encouraging people to take iPads and Android tablets to the gym to track their workouts. And that just, I guess it's okay. I mean, I I don't have a problem with people using an iPad in the gym if it's obvious that they're just entering their sets and stuff. But it's so hard to unwieldy, you know. Or yeah, really? well, not just that, but this guy, you could see from the image, he was like sitting on a curl machine. Yeah. Taking a picture of the guy. I think that's what bugs me. So it's obviously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not even like, here I'm entering my sets from. The curl yeah, machine. Might as well it's... bring a DSLR and just point it at the guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's. That just yeah. To another thing, like. Ah, never mind. I'm too tired to articulate it. I'll talk oh, about that okay. later. Okay. Just people, people putting down other people, just like because they're not skinny. Well, you're fat as shit. You know, so what? Or in the same thing, like you know, rail skinny guys, like putting down on like really really fat people is like you do nothing to take care of your body you can't really talk that much yeah I mean remember that that thing yesterday about the mirror guy the what the, what guy the, the guy with the, the tattoo on his pec and everyone's like that's not the real that's not the same guy oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah I yeah, could yeah. not wrap my head around how people are that fucking stupid he had two tattoos <laughs> <It> was... yeah <laughs> Yeah, just... <laughs> They're on the wrong shoulders. No, oh my oh, god! Oh yeah, god! <laughs> yeah. For those listening at home that haven't seen this, there's a um, there was a photo that popped up on Facebook. A guy was showing before and after. You know, he he was in decent shape before. It was obvious that he had been lifting, but just at a glance he was somewhere in the low 20 percentage you know 21 22 23 percent body fat in the first image second image he's cut i i can't even begin to place where he is he's muscular enough it throws me i would say somewhere between 10 and 13 percent body fat in the second Actually, image. Like, less than that I even don't know shit. i don't know <laughs> Well, the point is, he's, he's cut. I mean, he did a good job of cutting down. And the only difference between these two images, I mean, one, it was obvious somebody else took the picture of him, and another, he took a picture of himself in a mirror. And there are Facebook posts commenting on this, saying that it's photoshopped because his tattoos are on the wrong shoulders. Why would you move Which your tattoos idiotic. around in Photoshop? Yeah. Or I think because it's that's like, oh yeah, it's not really him either. Or like, like yeah, seriously, yeah. some other dude decided to coincidentally get the same tattoo, the same two tattoos on the opposite side. Well, that's now we had a similar. We did have a similar situation to this last year, where there was a guy that uh, posted, I think, in progress pics. You know, look at my great progress, and it, he had apparently dropped all this weight and gained all this muscle, which would be great, except for a tattoo that disappears. He had the tattoo um, when he was fat, and then when he was thin, it was gone. I think I posted that. 
and it was the picture of Brandon Morrison from Lift Big, Eat Big, but I reversed the <laughs> progress. I reversed the order of the pictures. Oh, okay. Well, never mind. I've been... when he went blue and dumb. <laughs> I've been duped by Mitchell. Great. Uh, add, uh, add Numsky being uh, naive. And Oh, wait. We already knew that. Never mind. <laughs> Gullible? All right, I gotta yep. go, guys. Check. All right, we'll cut this until next week, and okay. uh, I will pick right. out our closeout music, and these guys will be surprised. Thanks for joining, guys. All right, bye bye. Catch y'all later. See ya. It's four in the morning. You sneak out of bed and tiptoe down the stairs. Go to the kitchen. Leave off the light, the Pillsbury cookie dough's waiting there. Yeah, you open the door, take the tube in your hand, get the scissors down from the shelf. 